And then you finally did get a job at Marvel Comics. I, I did. Uh, How and, long did it take? Uh, about five. It, I graduated college in 2000, and I really got my big break in 2005. I had hit or miss stuff See, in between now and years. then. five years. He worked at it five years. Okay, it people, felt hear like, that. It felt like forever. I was 25 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, it felt like forever, but then later on I hear stories about people that, you know, waited until their 40s or whatever to like finally get in and be a success at comic books so and some people really go oh, and you're in your 20s so yeah. you've landed a job at marvel comics what are you doing uh i uh my first big break was on a book called drax the destroyer so i was living in manhattan at the time and because it was a crazy story if you want to hear the crazy story i love the uh, crazy story. A, a little old lady rear-ended my car and it was a junky old you know used car and the insurance company paid me out probably way more than the car was worth and I was at the time thinking about giving up on comics because it had been five years and I'm like I've really got to go get a real job and do something else and so I was really thinking about hanging it up and so you got hit in the rear I like got kick in the pants it was a kick in the pants and I instead of buying another car I bought a one I, I had I was living in Nashville at that time I'd taken a, a year off to go hang out with friends and play in bands and draw draw on, on the side uh, so I bought a one-way plane ticket and packed two suitcases and went into the Manhattan and just said, you know, I've got you know, so many thousands of dollars, not that much, but I'm just going to go until the money runs out and risk it all. And, um, uh, that's what I did. I lived in a shoebox apartment on a hundredth and Broadway. Uh, that was probably not much bigger than this studio right here that we're in. And it was a converted hotel room. And I went down to Chelsea and to the art store down there. And I bought a uh, air mattress and a drafting table and some paper and I just went to town uh, I had a friend at the time I had already known I knew some people in and around the comic book business so my friend was drawing an X-Men book and he lived in Chelsea Sean Chen uh, he's very talented and he was in his mid-30s at the time and uh, he would skateboard up from Chelsea to turn his pages in at Marvel and nobody really did that because everybody lives kind of everywhere but he would go and turn his pages in every Friday. So I'd call him every Thursday and tell him, hey, Sean, I've got three new pages. I want to show them around the office. Would you sneak me in the freight elevator? Because this is after 9-11, obviously, and they, all the buildings were really locked down, and that's when they started doing the passcodes and all the, the you know, the, you had to have the mm. lanyard to get in the yes. building. So he would sneak me in on the freight elevator to the editorial floor, and I would just go in and make the rounds and stop editors if they didn't look like they were busy, uh, if they if they were busy or had their doors shut, I would obviously make copies of all my new pages and I'd slide them under the door. And I just did that for about five months. And eventually they, I, I broke them down <laughs> and they called me and said, all right, uh, you're getting better. We, you're, you're, we like your work. And an editor called and said they wanted me to try out for this book called Drax the Destroyer. And I had no idea who this character was. He was a very obscure character at the time. Now, almost everyone who's a Marvel fan knows Drax the Destroyer because he's one of the critical uh, characters in the Guardians of the Galaxy film franchise. He's the guy with the tattoos played by uh, John Batista. Is that his name? Batista. Yeah. Um, he's nodding. You're on the radio. You have to say something. <laughs> I'm nodding fervently. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had his name name right. Um, I'm not a big movie guy, but, uh, uh, but anyway, I got that gig and... Um, by the second issue, I started getting calls from DC Comics, and because I was, you know, it's like when you get start dating the hot girl. Yeah. All the other girls want to give you a call, oh. so <laughs> DC starts calling me at like just a few months after. It's like the dam kind of broke for me, and so then I call Marvel and my editor, and I said, "Hey, I've been doing this for now a couple months. I really like working with you guys. It's been a lot of fun, uh, but this is only four issues, and do I have a future beyond this? Um, because DC is calling me, and they have some new things they're doing in the fall, and they're interested in my work and." Uh, and the next day, I got a call from the editor-in-chief, and they offered me a two-year exclusive contract, which at the time, that's kind of the thing, right? I mean, that guarantees you work. It means they'll keep feeding you uh, gigs uh, you by got contract. contract, yeah, two-year yeah. contract. And so at, at that time, I mean, I, I, of course, I accepted, and, um, and then I made a decision to move back to Arkansas. After your two-year contract? No, I, I immediately. You I was, mean you kept the contract and got to move back to Arkansas at the same time? Yeah, because you work anywhere uh, as oh. a comic book artist because you, you just, I just send the pages in Was that because you saw the FedEx. Twin Towers fall and you're like, I'm out of here? No, well, this is 2005, right? Oh, but so. I've been in and around that area for five years. So I moved there in 2000 just before. In fact, I, I had a view of the Twin Towers before, like in my New Jersey apartment in 2000 when I moved there. Did you see them fall? 
Were you there? When I they- did not see them fall. Uh, although I did, uh, you know, I saw all the aftermath. I was working at Starbucks on the George Washington Bridge in Fort Lee, New Jersey. That's how I was paying the bills at the time. Uh, so, but that was a bizarre experience because I was did the opening shift, so I was there at six in the morning and. Um, and then kind of experienced it all by watching the insanity of like these massive military bomb trucks that I never even knew existed going over that Fort Lee bridge. So I saw all the emergency services vehicles going over the bridge at the time. And it was a, it was quite an unforgettable experience. That's for sure. I want to t- say to our listeners, thank you for spending your time with us. We hope you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. And be brave and keep it up. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the picture of Carrie's face in the center of the screen. To watch the full-length interview, click the video in the top right. For more interview highlights, click the video in the bottom right. Thank you for watching.